Plastic is used in everything from valves and parts that keep planes in the air to disposable grocery bags that are used for an average of 15 minutes and then thrown away. Plastic is durable, it's versatile, and it literally lasts for centuries. It's become so cheap that it's used to make things we don't intend to keep, along with countless uses in household goods and toys that will probably never go away. Plastics are made from a wide variety of chemicals combined in ways that have not been tested for safety until they're already in use and problems emerge. We can reuse, we can recycle, we can even refuse plastic by looking for alternatives. And the good news is that there are more and more options each year. Even so, the plastic problem seems overwhelming, from sea animals with plastic inside them to mountains of trash that isn't recycled. What can we really do about it? Well, start at home. Start where you can take some control. And your first focus should be on plastic that isn't just unsightly, it's unhealthy. Plastic is known to leach, which means if it's heated or scratched, chemicals can wind up in food or even in the mouth of a baby sucking on a pacifier. The mixtures of chemicals that make up a particular plastic may pose a variety of pretty scary risks. They could increase the risk of cancer and infertility, and they may even affect brain development. In fact, we don't know the full extent of how plastic will affect us in the long term. The good news is there are ways to spot the most harmful plastics and tips to keep leaching to a minimum. We've all seen those recycling symbols on the plastic we use. It's a triangle with a number in the middle of it. And the number is important. Now you don't need a chart with every plastic for reference. You just need to remember these three numbers, three, six, and seven. Plastic products with these numbers are made up of chemicals that are considered the most worrisome in terms of toxicity, and they are among the most difficult to recycle. To make things even easier, simply don't use any kind of plastic to pack lunches or to store leftovers for drinks, plates, and dinnerware. Choose glass, stainless steel, ceramic, or silicone instead. If the plastic in any item, including toys, is scratched or looks degraded, recycle it. And off-gassing plastic is always a good idea. This means taking larger plastic items like toys and furniture out of the package and letting them sit outside so chemical fumes can float away before you use them. There are many other small steps you can take to reduce plastics in your home. Take reusable bags to the store, including bags for produce. Substitute reusable silicone covers for plastic wrap. Make disposable water bottles a thing of the past. When they're stored in hot areas like warehouses or garages or car trunks, the plastic is more likely to leach chemicals into the water. Your own home filtration system is actually healthier, less expensive, and renewable. And I'm happy to say, in addition to the small steps people can take to reduce their use of plastic, large strides are being made through regulations and companies who have not just pledged to reduce their use of plastic, they're actually innovating in exciting ways to find alternatives. The plastic problem isn't so overwhelming with awareness and solutions. Take steps in your own home to make a difference for your family and for the future by thinking about every piece of plastic in your home and deciding, is it worth it?